Thank you again for joining us for the virtual learning sessions of the Growing Brain PH. So the virtual learning sessions are bite-sized learning sessions meant to support um, families in understanding children and building your parent-child interactions so that we optimize your child's growth and development. So the topic today is building the parent-child relationship through play. So one of the advanced questions that we received um, from the registrants was, do I need to structure or plan out the toys to play with to aid an infant's development? And so let's go over the, uh, today's topic and hopefully be able to answer mommy's questions. No? So three facts we're learning tonight, that reviewing that the brain is complex and developing throughout life, that children learn best in the context of relationship, and that there is a developmental approach in engaging children in play. So we have to remember na ang mga bata po, iba-iba yung pace that they meet developmental milestones. Minsan po iba-iba yung timing, iba-iba din yung ways that they learn certain skills. But development is always within a range. So if you notice that your child is not meeting milestones or outside of the usual range, then please make sure you consult with your pediatrician or other child health professionals for individualized care. So this topic won't be targeting milestones, but what I want to emphasize with the topic is how do we think about our interactions with our children? Um, how do we keep in mind yung complex brain development na nangyayari from baby all the way to adulthood? And then keeping in mind that learning is best within the context of relationships and that there are developmental approaches in the way we do it. So the last week when we talked about understanding behaviors and development and brain development, we were talking about the bottom and top brain functions and just reminding you that sabi nga po natin, when babies were born, the, the part of the brain that is most mature and working is the bottom parts of the brain. Pero yung additional parts, the parts for emotions, the parts for problem solving, these are still developing. These are still maturing as the child is growing up all the way until we're currently adults. And so I wanted to share first the quote from Dr. Daniel Siegel. As I mentioned him before, he is a neuroscientist who works a lot with the science or neuroscience behind relationships. So ang sabi po niya, from a basic biological perspective, the child's neuronal system, which is the structure and function of the developing brain, is shaped by the parent's more mature brain. Lots of big words, pero basically ang sinasabi po ni neuroscience. Ang brain po ng children natin, even our own, is shaped by the meaningful relationships and interactions we have throughout life. And again, this is most especially the development of children made by their parents and caregivers who are having the more mature brain, the ones that have uh, more responsive and caring approaches for the child's needs. So, ang sinasabi nila, you, as the adult, you, as the parent or caregiver, are the difference of how your child will learn, and more specifically, how a child can learn through play. At bakit ba play palate ang pinapoint out ng mga child development um, specialists or advocates? It's because although children can learn skills in many different ways, it can be it can be taught sitting down at the table, um, being drilled into them over and over again. Pero they've noticed that when children learn in a positive environment, in a playful environment, mas mabilis po ang learning ng skills. So kaya learning through play ang goal natin. So what I wanted to do with the topic this weekend was to share with you the concept of what we call as floor time. 
Floor time is actually an approach done by DIR practitioners like myself who are trained to provide neuroscience-based um, parent coaching and intervention with families who might have children with developmental delays. But I wanted to share kasi maganda po siyang approach for anyone working with any type of child, whether it's typically developing or someone who might have delays. Simply because floor time is actually a mindset. So I'll read the slide. It's a mindset. It's an approach of connecting with children in the present moment, working on developing new social, emotional, and intellectual skills. So kumbaga, ang sinasabi niya, pwede natin silang turuan ng social, emotional, motor skills, um, language skills, all these problem-solving skills that are part of the developmental milestones nga po, no? or developmental domains. And we can do it in this in-the-moment approach. Because you have to remember, diba, the first social-emotional interactions that children will have are actually with adults. It's with their caregivers. Paglabas pa nga lang ng baby, who helps them um, understand this chaotic world? They come out, they're born, they're cold, it's a new environment, it's really loud. They meet the OB who catches them, the pediatrician who checks them up. And right now, we advocate for skin-to-skin -skin contact for our newborn babies with their mothers when they can. So that early on pa lang, being born pa lang, these children are receiving care, they're receiving love, they're receiving a sense of security in a world that is so chaotic, and it's coming from a, a trusted adult. And so it just really tells you social emotional um, skills can start so early and it's provided by adults. But moving on as they're growing older, po, um, an adult will be able to follow a child's lead or interest and use naturally engaging toys and games to develop back and forth interactions and stronger relationships. But what does that mean? What does it mean to follow a child's lead or interest? Uh, dapat ba lahat ng gusto ng anak natin, pagbibigyan ng natin, kasi follow the child's lead nga, will that make them any smarter? Hindi naman po. This doesn't mean that children get whatever they want. Naman. It doesn't mean that even if it's dangerous or if it's something not allowed or it's, in an, it's not an appropriate time, pagbibigyan natin sila parate. But it's actually trying to make sure that as they're growing, we're helping them make choices, guiding them on how to explore, guiding them how to make appropriate choices also as they're growing up, as we are developing the upper brain functions of our children. So for example, you uh, might be holding a toy. So may hawak kang laruan and you want to... Um, see if they'll be enticed to play with it. So the idea is you're gonna choose a toy that's engaging, something that they'll want to take part in or participate in. So let's say, yun nga, may hawak ang toy. Um, they look at it, it looks exciting. Uh, they might make a sound, they might gesture or reach for it. And you can say and interpret, oh, did you want it? Uh, Gusto mo yung toy? Sige, pagbigyan natin. So this toy has five parts. So I can actually remove one and, and give. Diba? I can give the little one a piece. And the idea is, because you got something engaging, the next step is to develop back and forth interactions. Ibig sabihin, gusto natin na hindi lang pinigyan kita ng toy, finish na. Gusto natin, there's an opportunity for them to also react, maybe ask for more, uh, maybe give you a reaction. And so that could be, I gave you one. Matutuwa siya, magsasmile siya, will probably look at it, play with it. And then because you're holding some more, you can actually engage them and entice them. I look, meron pa ako. And there's an opportunity to lay for your little one to maybe ask for more. So they might drop what they're holding, they might keep holding it, but there's an opportunity for them to look at you. 
And then ask for more. Make another sound. Reach for another piece. Gusto ko pa. Ay, gusto mo pa pala? Here, isa pa nga. Let's give you another one. And so what we are able to do is follow what the child is interested in. Follow what they're able to do. Um, using toys that are engaging. And it's a nice back and forth interaction. And the reason why we want to do it this way is that we build um, meaningful and strong relationships. And practicing these back and forths also allows us to develop um, meaningful attachments also. So some strategies to support um, floor time play. Number one is actually to know your child as best as you can, or to keep, keep their skills and individual differences in mind. And what do I mean by that? Um, we want to know, and the yung mga kaya na bang gawin na skills ng kids natin? Are they already sitting up? Are they already speaking? Or ano yung naiintindihan na nila? And ano yung hindi pa? Ano yung hindi pa nila kaya? Ano yung kaya na nating turo sa kanila? And then the second part to that is the individual difference. Um, what makes your child unique? Kasi di ba nga po, not all children are the same. Uh, their likes and dislikes will be different. Anyone who has more than one child will probably tell you siblings have differences all the time. They might look alike, pero iba-iba pa rin sila. May likes and dislikes. Meron silang favorites also. And these are individual differences. Some children might not like bright bright rooms some children might not like loud sounds some people can probably tolerate it and so these are individual differences we need to keep in mind because if we want to have a meaningful interaction alam naman we give our children something that they hate or give them an interaction or environment that is hard for them to stay in and to pay attention okay the next one i wanted to share was to join in in the play Join in and not just join, but every time we have an interaction, ang aim ng interaction is engagement, is a back and forth um, engagement and interaction. Because yun niya, ang sabi natin, ang learning needs to take place in the context of relationships. And then you see what they're trying to do or try to figure out or what they're trying to figure out. So think about what they're trying to learn with the actions that they're doing. The child who might be throwing and picking, and then you're picking up the toy over and over again. The objects can actually fall. And then objects reappear because it's pinapulat siya ni mommy. And then we want to be able to provide support to accomplish goals. So if they're playing with um, blocks, playing, building towers. So you give them another piece to connect. You give them another block to add to the tower. If they're working on a puzzle at Meron Baliktad, hindi na mahanap, flip the puzzle piece over to the right side up. Maybe push it a little closer para makita na na yung hinahanap na na. And so these are ways that we, prov we provide and give them a sense of accomplishment when we're playing. And then we also want to be able to teach them something new, diba? So gusto natin, we present new challenges when you see that they're ready. And sometimes you might not see that they're ready, so you might try. Try to see and challenge them. So let's say a little baby who is learning to crawl. Um, maybe you have a fun toy that they like to hold and play with and they might start moving towards it. And so by the you move it a little bit backwards, a little at a time, para napipilitan sila to move closer to it. Um, let's say you're pretending to play. Um, you have blocks and you can make suggestions with the blocks like, oh, look, I built a school. Um, your little dolls can go to their new house. And so these are new challenges and new ways of thinking and then see where your child will go with that idea. And then lastly, is to make sure that your playtime is always spontaneous and fun. Play shouldn't feel like work. Hindi dapat pinag-iisipan ng 
masyadong matindi. We need to be able to enjoy the interactions with our children. It needs to be fun from our perspective and their perspective as well. Because again, if it's within this positive interaction, that's when we actually build stronger and better memories for the skills that we want to teach. So just to give an example, um, we received an advanced question from the mommies who registered for today's session. And one of the questions was, um, what are age appropriate toys and activities for eight months old, for an eight month old? So, hindi natin tinackle ang actual toys or age appropriate toys. Um, that might be a very long discussion. Um, but I thought of tackling this question in terms of our topic nga po today and thinking about how can I make this interaction, how can I make playing with an eight month old more interactive? No, so the the wonders or the thoughts na pumapasok sa mind ko as I got this question was, so I wonder um, what is the child already able to do? Um, if I introduced something um, for them, would they be able to do it also? Ani yung mga na enjoy niya na toys? Ani yung mga favorite activities niya? Sino mga favorite people niya? And and so how can I make something or an object more engaging so that um, they'll have a more involved and meaningful relationship with an adult? So let's say the eight-month-old has these skills. So sometimes, we, most of the time, we expect our eight-month-olds to already be talking with facial expressions. Kaya, quote-unquote, facial expressions because we get these back and forth um, smiles and laughters. And, and that's for them, that's an expression already. That's a communicative intent. They're communicating with those gestures or we make meaning out of them. And it can be reaching, holding, shaking, throwing. Um, some of them might start to point um, in terms of motor movements. Some of them are able to sit up. Some of them are already starting to crawl. So just thinking about the skills of an eight-month-old, the activities that come to mind, one of them was actually peekaboo um, because that's what I put in my IG's, IG post the other day. But the idea of peekaboo, why it's so fun for this age group is that eight-month-olds don't quite have object permanence yet. And yeah, out of mind, out of, out of sight, out of mind. Um, so object permanence is just developing at this time. So this is a fun game. Peekaboo is fun because sometimes, yeah, um, it, what you're doing is you're hiding. So you basically, in the child's mind, you disappeared. And then you show, show up. And then you, when you show up, you're playful. Um, boo or peekaboo or you make funny faces and whatnot. And you reappear magically in this really fun way. You know? So you can actually make use of these skills of talking with facial expressions, um, these laughters, these smiles, even having the baby be the one to reach and pull down the cover. So there are so many skills that can go into just playing peekaboo. And the nice thing about it is it's an interaction. It involves you and your child. Hindi lang siya solo na naglalaro. So she nagkakaroon siya ng additional skills. Nung master niya yung iba-ibang skills niya in the context of a relationship with you. The other things that I thought of if we were thinking about actual objects was maybe singing, singing with simple instruments. Shakers, you can make your own shaker, you can buy shakers, um, you can buy rattles and all these things. And imagine lang yung pwede yung back and forth interactions with, with those types of objects. So pwede kayong sabay nung nagsha-shake ng musical instruments, you can sing songs together. Um, a lot of children enjoy music and some of them might even dance and enjoy the beat. And so it's another nice opportunity to promote relationships with your children. So going back to the question, so do, we, do I need to structure or plan out toys to play with to aid in infant's development? One, again, we have to remember that toys won't be the ones to teach your child skills. It's really us as adults 
who are the source of the skills that they learn. So I think the way we can have a structure and a plan um, for development, whether it's an infant, a toddler, or even someone who's older, is actually to have the mindset of where is my child right now in terms of development? Um, and how can I make interactions um, and relationship be the guide to helping them learn and develop more? So it would be nice to have a plan. So I'm not against having a learning plan or even those who want to be proactive in choosing materials that, are, that a child can possibly hold or um, possibly play with or interact with. The um, most important is when you create this plan, that the plan involves you, okay? So just as a review, the three facts again, tackling today, the brain is very complex and developing throughout life. And because that is happening, we want them to learn and develop emotional and problem solving skills in the context of relationships, someone who can model, someone who can help teach and guide and shape the way a child is thinking. And we need to do it in a developmentally appropriate approach that is engaging. It's that relationship needs to be engaging and that relationship would be best if it was interactive as well. So that ends this topic. We will end the recording so that we can entertain questions from the group.